from Arndo and Deathwaltz. I've been tasked to answer 10 questions uh, from the Splattered Plastic guys, which I'm going to attempt to do now and not come off too much of an ass. Uh, I don't remember the first horror movie I ever saw, like, uh, seriously. Like, I remember the, the movie that left an impression on me, which was Salem's Lot on TV. Um, and I also remember there was an episode of, I think it was a Hammer House of Horror, where the house was bleeding inside, and that, like, terrified me. Um... And then I, you know, I would watch like, you know, I'd watch like old Universal Monsters, but it, I, as much as I loved those films, I was too young, I think, to really understand what they were. It wasn't until I was a little bit older and discovered Video Nasties where it kind of like hit home that, yeah, this is a genre that I love. Um, so I think there's just, there's a couple of movies there, you know, like, like I said. Favourite decade for horror? without a doubt the 1970s come on man it's like there's some heavy hitters man in the 70s you got texas chainsaw massacre you got cannibal holocaust you got uh legend of hell house you got stuff like let's get jessica to death uh, race with the devil like the hits just keep a coming like uh, uh, yeah nothing nowhere comes close to the 70s for like you know ingenuity and intensity people love the 80s but honestly what did 80s horror have hair metal uh, i don't have a favorite horror director in fact this whole bit of 10 questions is not really suited to me because i'm not really one for like definitive lists you know i love like early toby hooper i love wes craven john carpenter um, Argento, Cronenberg, you know, you can't, you, I couldn't pick, I couldn't pick one director that I'm like, that is my favourite director, because, you know, different moods require different movies, um, so it's just, yeah, I mean, those, those are the guys that I would go to, though, fairly obvious, I think, Argento, Cronenberg, Hooper, Romero, Carpenter, but what are you going to do? There's a reason you go straight to those guys, because they're the best. <clears throat> as much as I love gore, and I do love gore, like I grew up in the 80s, uh, obsessed with gore. I was one of those guys that was like trading videos, and if I could get the version of Reanimator that was, I think it was like four seconds longer when you see the bone saw go through the chest, I would be trading for that. Um, so as much as I love that, uh, suspense, man, you know, gore is like fun, but it doesn't really stay with you. It doesn't, it can't affect how you feel. Uh, whereas like, you know, a creepy, suspenseful scene or movie can kind of alter your mood and kind of transform the rest of your evening. <laughs> I'm a real big fan of the slow burn. So I like those kind of 70s movies that... Kind of nothing happens in them, but they're just creepy because nothing happens in them. Um, so as much as I love stuff like The Thing and The Blob, uh, two 80s movies, which are, obviously I just shit on that entire decade, um, but let's gloss over that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, suspense all the way. VHS, DVD or Blu-ray? Right, so VHS... Very cool, pretty cool. Uh, Super 8, yeah, very cool. Or 4K UHD, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Come on, man. I am 4K Blu-ray all the way. Zombie Flesh Eaters, Halloween, Maniac. Suspiria, this is like, I've never seen this movie look this good. Uh, VHS is what got me into horror movies, man. But I ain't watching movies on VHS. I'm not that cool. Best slasher movie? 
Halloween. Uh, Michael's cooler than Jason. That's for damn sure. I'm really sorry, Romero fans, but Zombie Flesh Eaters, AKA Zombie 2 by Lucio Fulci is the best zombie movie. I know you love the social commentary in Dawn of the Dead. I know you love the gore in Day of the Dead. And I, love, I know you love the suspense of Night of the Living Dead, but in not one of those fucking films do any of them fight a shark. End of story. Uh, my favourite monster... I'm a monster kid, man. I can't... You can't make me choose. I love them all. I love all the monsters. I love Frankenstein's monster. I love the Bride Frankenstein. I love Creature from the Black Lagoon. I love the Blob. I love uh, Seth Brundle. I love... All of the monsters in the thing, uh, way too many to choose from. I even love the monster from Extro. You know, I don't know, I have so many, man. Like, you know, I love, I love Graham Humphreys because obviously he is kind of ingrained in my youth um, because he did The Evil Dead and Nightmare on Elm Street quads, UK quads. Uh, which were I like unlike other movie posters I've seen. So like I'm a huge fan of Graham Humphreys, but then I'm also like uh, you know I'm looking at like a Michael Reader piece over there. I've got 3D piece on my wall from Massive Attack, uh, Neck Face. I have multiple pieces by Candy's Trick. Um, I guess at the first Mondo Khan I met Bernie Wrightson and brought an original off him, which was like incredible. And I don't often get my photo taken with people I'm not that guy that needs an autograph or you know to have a photo that I, I met someone but Bernie Wrightson he, he was uh, an absolute legend an incredible artist um, so I have that piece and I still have to get it framed so this has kicked my ass to get that framed uh, why horror why not <laughs> I, I don't know man you know why not I mean it's I think horror as a genre is um, horror can do a lot of things as a genre which I think others some other genres struggle with like you know you can do far more with a horror movie than you can with a rom-com a good horror movie can not only make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up but it will make you think about what's going on that's why I love the, the 70s as a, as a decade because they were employing a lot of like social commentary in their movies. They were talking about what's going on around them. Um, so I think the best, of, the best of horror movies can do that. Um, I think if you grew up watching horror movies, then they're with you for life, man. I don't know many people who were like, oh, I used to like horror movies when I was like 13 or 14, but I don't watch them now. It's kind of a genre that you grow with and, and you stick with. Um, and it's always got a surprise, right? So, you know, just as you think you're getting tired of like, you know, a slasher movie or, you know, whatever. I think horror has the ability to surprise and push boundaries even now. Just look at this year alone, we've had Brandon Cronenberg's Possessor. It's one of the greatest movies I've seen in the last five years, man. It's incredible. We had Invisible Man at the beginning of the year, which feels like 20 years ago. But again, that is like a super original piece of horror that speaks to what's happening now. So it's super current. Um, you know, we had Freaky in The Hunt, which are like super fun movies. Um, Horror can do a lot within what you think would be its limited scope of being a horror movie. The best, the best horror movies are not just straight scare movies. They're telling you more about what's going on around you, what's currently happening.